Hello Mouseworks fans and welcome to the Mousetrap, your weekly dose of modeling news around the world. Uh, this week we don't have a whole lot uh, going on so this will be a pretty short uh, issue of the magazine. And basically all we have for the news is that uh, again continuing with the Hobbyco Dilemma, Hobbyco US, uh, they are moving everything over to Revell Germany which is being bought by a consortium that bought Revell and Revell Germany. They're going to combine the two in Germany and just call it Revell. Uh, they have uh, basically had to move all the molds from U Revell US to uh, Revell Germany. So a lot of the kits that you remember uh, from Revell USA, a lot of the old uh, 50s cars and early funny cars and things like that, uh, those molds have been all moved over to Europe. Uh, they unfortunately probably won't be reproducing a lot of those since they are going to be looking after the European and Asian markets. So uh, maybe they'll sell off some of the molds and some people will be able to buy them back here in the U.S. and start producing them. But for now, that's uh, the story as uh, I have heard it. So uh, anyways, that's a short issue here. So next up, we will get to the uh, future kit releases. Stay tuned. Hello Mouseworks fans and welcome to uh, Future Kit News and this week there hasn't been a whole lot. Um, some of the bigger ones was uh, that MiniArt is going to be doing their Berg Panther A uh, which looks really really nice. Um, it'll be based on their Berg Pan or their Panthers that they have been producing already and should look pretty nice. Comes with a full interior, uh, box, work, box art looks really good. so. Be looking forward to that and they're also going to be doing a uh, Berg Panther D version with full interior so uh, those ones will be uh, probably snapped up pretty quick so get your pre-orders in to wherever your hobby local hobby shop is um, beyond that there hasn't been a whole lot of news uh, if you heard anything exciting uh, give me a holler um, on my feed here and um, any manufacturers that want to have their stuff featured uh, drop me a line as well and we'll get them on so uh, now stay tuned for the kit review Alrighty, for this week's kit review, um, I was going to do the uh, P51 Mustang by Revell Germany in 30 second scale, but I'm working on a video of building that up, so um, I do have a few parts going for it, so painting those up. Um, all I can say about the kit is it is very excellent, it's a different type of plastic than the old, well older um, Fock Wolfs, so it's a little different material and seems to be building up a little better. Uh, they do give you everything to make it an early P51 uh, D-5 uh, and even they even give you a different throttle handle for the early version which is really nice. So that kit is definitely worth picking up and definitely worth the price. So this week we're going to review uh, Trumpeter's uh, Ukrainian T84 BM O-Plot which was uh, basically converted from a regular T-84 um, by the Ukrainians and did have, they had their own little touches to it. Um, quite, the, quite the vehicle. And from earlier news programs I did, you can see the actual uh, digital camouflage. And uh, if you pick up one of those Voyager model steel templates to cut those out, it'll make this a lot easier than trying to hand paint it or mask it freehand. So let's see what we got in the box. Um, there is the digital camouflage, how it's supposed to go together on this vehicle. Uh, it's going to make a very interesting paint job. And got the instructions, typical trumpeter, um, very concise. They have loosened it up a little bit where the pictures are a little bit less cluttered, which is a good thing because when they were extremely cluttered it was very aggravating because you'd lose track of parts and you'd forget to do a part and you can't go back to get it so anyways the uh, instructions are pretty clear and straightforward um, this kit is actually going to be a little easier than some of the other uh, T-72s because it doesn't have as much external piping and so forth a lot of it is covered up so um, this will be a much easier kit it actually has a lot less parts Still a ton of parts, but a lot less than some of those T-72s. Um, and looks like all the different electronics packages, which this tank is famous for. 
and the final uh, assembly complete with dazzlers from the T90. So this has kind of got a lot of T90 equipment on this actual tank. So let's see what else we got here. We got uh, one of their flyers on what is new coming out. Um, why not go through that a little bit? Uh, they got a little missile truck here coming out, which is actually going to look pretty cool. Um, one of their stealth fighter designs in China, and then their big uh, uh, THAAD system, which is actually out for sale now. So that looks like a pretty good kit as well. Okay, so going through this, basically the first sprue has the uh, front glacius plate and some of the front uh, armor protection uh, to the turret itself. One real nice thing about trumpeters is all the little parts that can get snapped off or snagged on something, they cover up with the foam, which is really, really nice. They've been doing that for quite a while. A lot of detail on the insides as well. No uh, knockout pins on this, which is really nice. They uh, Looks like they finally decided to start putting their knockout pins at the bases of their uh, runner points. Uh, something that uh, Hasegawa started doing a long time ago, and uh, to me as well. Um, Hasegawa's kind of been the leader of that, that they are known for not having a lot of knockout pin marks. There's still a few in here, but they should be ones that are covered up. But yeah, putting those points on there, um, technology is moving forward. They need to start doing that more. I, I don't mind clipping off all these little pieces here, as long as it keeps a knockout pin r uh, mark right on the middle of a part. So... Hopefully that'll be a trend what Trumpeter is doing. Okay, looks like um, some grid work here. I'm not sure if that's uh, a little bit of slat armor or just uh, guards. Um, and some reinforcing pieces, a couple sprues of that. Um, looks like the wheels. Um, they did do a little bit different on the wheels. They actually... Uh, they still got the seam down the middle, unfortunately. I wish they would get away from that, but they do have a little better detail on the outside of the actual rubber um, uh, grips, if you will, or the texture on there. Um, some parts are really tiny. I don't know if you can even see it on the camera. Little tiny U-bolts, and uh, yeah, but, uh, but they're stout. I mean, they don't even have to cover those up to keep them from breaking off because they're so stout. Used to be models that had that would break off. They did some slide molding. Looks like on some smoke dischargers. Um, looks like the sprockets. Uh, started doing this ring system on them, uh, which is really nice. That way they don't get a lot of problems and they don't have to have as many points attached. They used to have three or four on this side and three or four on that side. So that's a new thing they're doing, keeping that real clean, real easy to work with. Uh, a lot of detail on the back. Again, no knockout pins like on the back of the idler here, or sprocket, I should say. They were using them right out on the runner there. Okay, moving along. Side skirts, one piece, really nice. Um, they look real good, real crisp. Um, the guards for the lights, the headlamps, are actually one piece, which is really nice. Trying to put those ones together in separate pieces is impossible. So uh, glad they're actually listening to people doing that. They're doing some slide molding so they can actually do it correctly. But being one piece on those, much appreciated. Uh, more uh, runners on the uh, sides of the tank and uh, the sponsons. Real crisp detail there. Uh, looks like a two-piece barrel. Um, pretty complicated barrel, so it would be hard to have it in aluminum, uh, one piece, um, or even slide molded, but it uh, uh, shouldn't be too bad. Uh, plow attachment points, does not have the plow. Some of the sensors are actually slide molded, so you don't have to have in multi -pe multiple pieces. Again, a nice touch there. Uh, some more of the um, cable ends and uh, looks like just miscellaneous bits and bobs there. Said there wasn't a lot of pieces, but yeah, there's a lot of pieces. <laughs> so, uh, more wheels, uh, same sprue as before. And the back deck, all this uh, grill work and everything is actually on there, which is really nice. They used to do these in separate pieces, which was, was nice if you wanted to have them open and so forth. But uh, um, anyways, they made it a little easier and had it all put on there. The uh, matlet cover is molded in plastic instead of the 
rubber, which I do not like that rubber. First of all, hard to paint, hard to glue, hard to get on, so on and so forth. Not a good idea. Tracks, the usual million piece tracks with the guide teeth there. Um, if you really don't want to do this, you can spend your time doing the metal track, which will pin together and go a lot faster. Um, these aren't too bad. And in here, we got more pieces. Another uh, one sponson that is the, uh, looks like the left sponson and the right sponson. Lots of details. Um, little bits and bobs again for the turret and so forth. Uh, basically the same set. So you got four sets of those. Turret is a T90 looking welded turret. Um, so like I said, this, the turret section, you can actually almost think of it as a T90 system. So, but the uh, chassis is a T84. And then speaking of the chassis, there's a chassis with the mounts for the uh, plow mount and all the detail on the belly of it. Uh, really looks sharp on there. Man, that looks good. Uh, copper cabling, which is nice. No, no longer stainless steel and hard to move. Uh, clear parts for some of the sensors and so on and so forth and some of the scopes. Photo etched. Lots of photo etched. Good grills and so forth. Um, light, these look really delicate, so I'm not sure how those are going to go. Um, but uh, at least they give you a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. And decals. Looks like just a couple decals there. Um, this cross thing and then the, the number 100 because I guess there was not a whole lot of these that they could get reference on. So anyways, looks like a real good kit. Little, Like I said, a little simpler than the T72s, but not by much. Still a lot of parts and a good challenge. Should build up to be a really nice model and Trumpeter has outdone themselves on trying to do this more slide molding and some of that uh, those pins for knockout pins, doing them on the runners and keeping keeping the parts clean. So good job on that. And uh, up next we should have our old kit review. Welcome Mouseworks fans to uh, Kit Rewind where we take a look at an old kit from many many years ago and uh, just take a look at it see what kind of technologies they had and uh, what these kits actually look like and this week we've got the Stingbat LHX helicopter first idea of stealth helicopter from many moons ago and uh, this was actually quite a uh, popular kit a um, couple ideas that really didn't come to fruition, which was the super bent uh, blades on the helicopter uh, rotor. Um, some things that actually came to fruition, like the covered helicopter um, uh, rotor hub. Um, that way there was actually less signature there and uh, less, less there. So that actually they started to do. Um, so let's take a look. Looks like uh, uh, internal weapons bays which they started using, they tried to use on the Cheyenne and a few other ones there. Nothing on the side. Um, just picture of the model on the side. Uh, Tester's a Talieri. This kit might eventually be repopped by a Talieri. Bottom has some uh, detail to it. Comes a little uh, missile cart here and uh, shows a little different uh, paint schemes. They have one that's all um, green with army and then the camouflage is for a marine scheme. So let's take a look and see what's inside. All right, end opening box. Now, a little word about end, end opening boxes. This is not so bad because it has an inside tray. Uh, Ravel of Germany, shame on you, you still use just this. And it makes a real pain to put the model back in the box. Um, just bad idea. Uh, plus they get crushed when you stack models up. So good idea if you don't want to abandon this this idea. Do like Testers Atelier did and they have an inside tray. So just a little word of help there. So hopefully they'll pick up on that. So it looks like there's only about two sprues. Let's cut them open here. See what we got. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. First sprue is just the whole fuselage. 
basically the whole deal all in one. Uh, one nice thing is, uh, even though it's an old kit, it actually has um, scribe panel lines, which is really nice. These vents are also molded open. That looks really, really sharp. Um, even some detail on the belly of it, a couple sink marks, which is to be expected for this old of a kit, which is, take a look, see if this has got a date on it here. Do, 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 do. No date there. Um, 1989, so 29 years ago. Again, doesn't seem like it, but uh, all right. So the clear has been not packaged separately, so of course it's off the runners. And uh, but they did try to tint it gold, which is really nice to make it basically stealthy. So we got a front and a rear canopy there. So there's the no good runner. Okay, looks like the blades, which are curved in and actually down, they're actually drooping, which is really cool because they would actually be made out of a carbon fiber composite. So they would actually droop uh, under the weight. And there's the hub there. Looks like a couple seats. They do have molded on belts, which is kind of nice. There's the little cart, little missile cart there. And the uh, whole thing is kind of warped. That was to be expected on models this age. It just they, they, What they would do is they would mold them in the machine and they put them in a big dryer and cool, slowly cool them down. And the dryer was uh, had all the sprues attached to it all the way around a hub. And, of course, they tried to rotate them, but a lot of times if it didn't move as fast, they would actually start to warp the whole tree of parts. Now, when they inject stuff, they inject it. The machine actually has cooling tubes underneath the steel that actually cool it right away it opens pops it out it's completely cool ready to be packaged so kind of an interesting thing there this is an impressive kit for the age though with the scribed lines real easy to build uh, a little history on the instructions building it up ground air they had it so you could actually make it so it didn't have any landing gear uh, or landing skids uh, you'd have them retract retracted for of course speed and stealth uh, simple instructions. They'd tell you a, a lot of information on them, which is kind of interesting. Back in the day, they would tell you, uh, they say something like, now cement, gun unit, into turret, slide, blah, 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 instead of just saying, part 84 here. So, that was, uh, they were a little more form informative back in the day. Technical notes, uh, time about stealth, so forth, giving you a little education, getting those old molds, old models just to educate. I wish they would do that again, that way, uh, if they really want to bring in the, the younger market again, which is dying off, I mean, that's one of the things they need to do is make it appealing to youngsters and to old people. I mean, some people don't realize what these things are all about. Adventures of Modeling, if you remember that, they have an ad for their uh, video series. How long we've come, we're on YouTube now. These were actually VHS tapes done on a PBS station. Um, Look them up, they actually are on YouTube. Some, some people put them out there. They're quite humorous, especially if you know some of the guys that are in there and what they look like now. So, has the colors and federal standards. Uh, let's see what else we got. Got the baggy, the decals look really good, especially really good for the age. Um, all blue, um, Air Force, Marines, and Army markings. So, that's kind of interesting. And then they actually gave you a list of all the testers paints with color uh, chips. Um, this is what was so neat about testers. I mean, they really were proud of their stuff. They really were into the model community. Um, unfortunately, they faded away from that. I wish they would get back to it because it's really disheartening that they had to jump into the craft market, which is saturated already. They think there's more money there, but they're in there with everybody else so hopefully they'll figure out that they do need to get back to the modeling community um, there's some of the models kits colors which I would say probably this many are probably discontinued now so um, like I said that's just one of my pet peeves about testers what what direction they're going so anyways hopefully they'll take a u-turn and, and help us modelers so anyways that is uh, that's quite interesting to look at that model it could be popped back now right now and i'll bet people wouldn't even know how old that mold really is because it's actually a really really good mold for the time so one of these days i'll build that up and uh, put it put it in a uh, what if category of one of the model contests show people what they had back then uh, thanks for watching and up next stay tuned for the new gear
Welcome Mouseworks fans to a, another episode of New Gear and this week as promised from last week I'm going to do the uh, cutters that I uh, purchased out of Hong Kong from I believe it's Despiday, uh, Des uh, whatever that is right there however they pronounce it um, these are cutters uh, if you're familiar with the lore of the God's Hands cutters uh, these are actually basically the same. They are supposed to cut completely clean. They're a little different in that one side of the cutter is sharp, the other is actually flat, so it's kind of like a guillotine type thing where it just closes instead of having both of them as cutters. That way it actually will cut straight through the part instead of pinching it and pulling it apart. So let's take a look. They uh, have this really nifty box work on it, which is really nice. I mean, it's real uh, hard case. This is kind of like the uh, the Ferrari of uh, modeling tools. They kind of show here about how how it works, where your actual cutter goes straight against the piece um, instead of actually having um, the two angles. Plus, it actually will tell you to actually cut before the run the part and then actually at the part. I'll show you that in a minute here. A little bit of instructions there. Um, single blade nipper, and let's take a look. Again, really nice box work. Uh, first class and inside they have a again a thank you and uh, thank you guys for thanking us for buying this stuff uh, comes with a little leather uh, pouch to cover up the blades the uh, one thing about these is the blades are so thin that if you drop them uh, you can't break them so you got to be careful of that so that's what that is for um, has a little snap on there too which is kind of nice so anyway so let's take a look and see what's Underneath that, uh, there is some instructions. Well, let's take a look. All right, little cleaning wipe, which is really nice. That's kind of cool. Huh. And a uh, little tutorial on how to actually cut the parts, um, how they actually snip, how to use the whole tool. I mean, it's a basic tool. They didn't really have to do this, but it's really cool that they did. So they're treating this as a real high-tech tool, which, in fact, it actually is. So let's take it out of the box. So we've got a little tool here, a little screwdriver. And that is to actually tension this down. It has a stopper to stop where you want the actual blades to come together. Some people may want to have them stop early. Um, again, they talk about that in your choices here. So and they also talk about it here so really really a1 plus on the packaging so as you can see it's got the little stopper there and it basically bottoms out there you should just see just a little bit of daylight through there if not any and uh, basically real short nippers that's kind of what surprised me is that the length was really really short and they're really really thin uh, as you can kind of see that there so uh, let me get you a little bit tighter view here okay moving to the cutting test these are my old Tamiya cutters that I used to use quite a bit still a very good set of cutters and you can hear them make a snapping noise and you can kind of see there there's actually a bit of white plastic where it pulled and there's actually a little bit of a ridge there so we will cut that with this silent and it's completely smooth across there is absolutely no white of any and uh, no ridge no nothing so much sharper cut than the Tamiya ones so good thumbs up on that one so I'll be using these from now on and just using these for larger parts or just general parts so thanks for watching and now go and build something